Later on, something came up. You see, the church now is free. So now they started focusing on who Christ is. I don't encourage you to go into the depth of this. It's going to give you a headache. But I'll just give you a touch. A touch of it, a taste of it. So who is Christ? We come to the, our beloved, the Catholic Church. How do they believe in Christ? They say Christ is two natures, one person. This is the belief of our beloved Catholic Church. He is two natures and one person. We come to the orthodoxy world. Orthodoxy world is divided into two main groups. There is the Eastern Orthodox and there is the Oriental Orthodox. Eastern like Russians, Greek, Rome Orthodox, you know the likes and then on the other hand the oriental orthodox is the coptic armenian uh, syrian orthodox and the ethiopian church these are all oriental orthodoxy now the oriental orthodoxy it believes christ is one nature and one person catholics believe he is two natures one person oriental orthodox believe he is one nature one person the Eastern Orthodox, Russian Greeks, they believe he is two natures, one prosipon. A prosipon is a Greek word, can mean a hypostasis and a person at the same time. I don't want you to remember this and please don't go there. Right? Just for the sake of argument. Now, prosipon can mean a person and a, an integral aspect of the divine nature. Where I come from, <laughs> none of the above. <laughs> Jesus Christ is, or Christ, he is two natures, two hypostases, one person. And this was the main argument in the fourth century at the Senate of Ephesus in 431 AD between Pope Cyril the fourth the Pope of Alexandria the Coptic Church and Nestorius the Pope of Constantinople Istanbul Turkey current times Nestorius said Christ is two natures two hypostases one person Cyril Pope Cyril the fourth Pope of Alexandria Coptic Church he said this is heresy because you are making two persons of Christ Christ is only one person can't be two this is heretical therefore Pope Cyril who believe and still believe that Christ is one nature one person excommunicated absently Nestorius from Christendom this is the belief of the church I belong to but I'll say one thing there was also a language barrier there was a language barrier at the time I don't know why I'm mentioning this man back then the universal language was Greek so the universal language in the fourth century was the Greek language like it is the English language of our time and age so the universal language was Greek. That's why a lot of churches were influenced by the Greek language. In fact, in our beloved Coptic church, they have the liturgy of St. Basil. It is Greek. And they use a lot of Greek words in their liturgical services. No problems. It's a beautiful language. That's fine. So in the Greek language, prosipon can mean a person and a hypostasis in the Aramaic Syriac language which I speak our church speaks hypostasis is not a person we call it in our language pneuma pneuma comes from the word pneum in Arabic or like icon pneuma is not a person what is a person in my language so I don't go for two for ten hours Noma or parsop or person in my language is parsopa. Parsopa is very similar to prosipon in Greek. So person as a person in my language, Syriac, Aramaic is parsopa. Now, to sum it up, all apostolic churches 
end up with one person, then what's the problem? There is no problem. For God's sake, unite. If I, if I came to know that in my church, the church of the East, that this church believed that Jesus Christ is two people, I'll take these clothes off and I'll walk away from this church. But I know, stamp sealed, this church is holy and believes Christ is one person. And if I were to believe that the church where I come from, where I belong to, believed that Jesus Christ became God at the age of 30 only, meaning he was not God at, at the time of conception, at the moment of conception in the mother Mary's womb, then I will take these clothes off and I will deny this church. This church believes the moment the archangel Gabriel greeted the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, the moment he greeted him and he said, you will conceive by the power of the Holy Spirit from that moment of conception and forever and ever to come, Jesus Christ is perfect God, perfect man and they were never separated, not even one slightest single moment. Jesus was perfect God and perfect man in the womb of the mother when he was born, when he was crucified, when he was buried, when he rose. He was always God and man together united with no separation. This is the belief of my church. And I can prove it to anyone who questions it. And this Catholics, all orthodoxy, oriental and Eastern and this church have the same faith.